Hey guys, it's Nikos here and welcome to another episode of this RTS game that I'm making. Let me take you through the project structure and the high level overview of how the code works. So let's jump right in. So we made the last episode uh, a few months ago. <clears throat> I've had to think a lot about what I want to do with this game and how I want to make it, so I think I've got some good ideas. And uh, as usual, the, all the code is here. So I'm going to jump into the actual code here. So basically we have the front end code and we have the server side code. What we have is a node application which basically serves up the data that's inside of the public folder. All these files and uh, compiled JavaScript comes from this client here. And we're using Webpack to take this stuff and bundle it into here. I won't bore you with the details of, details of the Webpack. Uh, you're free to go and look at how that code works. So in terms of the, the game, I'll just check to see that the mood server started. So npm start, that actually starts up the, it runs the build, which is basically the webpack, and then it then uh, moves the Babylon framework to the public folder in here, and then also runs the node server, which serves up the code on port 3000. There we go. So what this this whole plane here is the the ground, and what these images are are tiled images. So if I just show you inside of the, we have a TypeScript class called ground, and it has these properties. It has a mesh. So the mesh, we reconstruct it by creating a plane and then we assign it uh, a material with the, the background image here. And th this image can be found in the assets folder and it gets assigned to the plane and just renders it. It's kind of a, I think of it as Tron as a, an inspiration of this. So the actual heavy heavy work of this uh, this game is, is contained within this game class here. Um, there's quite a lot of code, so let me just try and break it down. I won't go into too much detail at the moment. <clears throat> so we basically we create this class called game, and we reference the Babylon JS framework and TypeScript, and we have some some classes that are in this game here. So in terms of the game we have the properties for for example the number of cores that you start off with. Um, we have a lobby which I'll use to show what players are playing. We have a reference to the canvas which is a reference to the actual WebGL canvas in this game. So if you look at the template for the index whoops, here. The index has uh, the GL canvas. This is what we rendered the 3D stuff to. And then we have a game overlay, which is what we use to render things like the unit selection, which I'll go over in a, a future video. Uh, and we actually hook into all of these things in the game. So back to the actual game class. So we have some common instantializations for the Babylon framework. I won't cover the basics there. You can go to the Babylon JS website to find, find out some of these basic things. So we create some of the units in here. Um, and then we have some event handling. So for example, when they click on, the, on this map, then for example, the things will be highlighted. Um, you can 
there's different methods that, for example, there's a there's a if there's a shift and a click, then of course it'll highlight it, and then you can click uh, here, and the the logic is handled in here, whether we want to move the unit and things like this. So like at the moment, because I'm not using a server, then all the animation is handled on the client side. So this add move command uses a Babylon framework to animate the positions of the units. And they can shoot as well. But when we move all this to the server, because we'll need to do all the animations on the server side. Um, I'm still deciding what kind of world variables, variables syncing framework I want to use to do that. Um, I might use something called socket IO. We'll see how it goes. So there's just some defaults here and the uh, colors of the scene. This is basically setting out the animations of the units. Oh, there's a... Uh, when, the, when I move units, for example, if I click all of them and I, I, have a, I click to move here, there's a formations class which will position the units in a circle. So if we, I'll just show you that. So the units go here and they equally space each other in this here. Uh, I've got a utility class that does this called uh, formations. So let me just jump into that. Where is it? Formations, create circular grouping. So there's some parameters like the number of uh, units selected and the center. So that's basically where I've clicked on the, the screen. And we have some maths here to work out the positions of the units. This is the method get centroid, which works out the center of mass. For example, this thing here, the green thing is the center of mass of all of the units. So you see this has a slight effect. There's a bug with this where it jumps down. I'll need to fix that at some point. Um, yeah, I'll need to re remove the uh, the units that are, yeah, we'll get there eventually. Oh, what else? Yeah, so we set up the dummy, dummy enemies, which are these things here. Okay, so I don't really want to overwhelm you, but uh, that's that's the gist of the game. Um, I look forward to making some more videos and ultimately playing some of this game with you guys once I have everything set up. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.